What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Tuesday Afternoon here at the Pace Studio in Midtown Manhattan, New York City. Uh, we are really, really happy today to be joined by Twain. Uh, guys, thank you so much for coming around and playing for us today. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you got a new album. It's coming out uh, next month. It's called Rare Feeling. Uh, we're excited to hear some, some tracks from that. I think you're also going to do one for us that is not on the record. But That's we'll get plan. to that one later. Yeah, unless we get cold feet about it. <laughs> uh, well, especially you're going to yeah, have... I yeah, I get cold feet. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Easily, I know. Yeah. Luckily, it's a little warmer in here than yeah. usual. I can put my shoes on. That's all right. You can put one of them on if you want to like balance it. Um, so uh, tell us about the first song you're going to do from, uh, from the record today. This is the eighth track on the record. It's called Dear Mexico. Uh, it's an adaptation of a poem I wrote. Uh, I can tell you a couple secrets about it. Uh, Portal Park is a fictional park, as far as I know, and uh, Pedro is a little statue of a skeleton. Uh, he's about three or four inches tall, and uh, yeah, cool. A little background there. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. <laughs>
Thank you. It's a beautiful song. Thank you. Um, so uh, I'm curious about the record that it is on. Um, I'm always interested when musicians uh, describe a song as coming from uh, something that they've written in words, uh, poetry. Uh, are you an artist who starts with uh, like the seed of a lyric or a line and builds music from there, or does it take different forms as you go? I like to do it every way, but uh, it's best when it all comes in, in one piece. In one piece. Uh, it's the easiest anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but that doesn't happen very often. In one piece in terms of like you hear music that go to go with words all sort of in one idea coming at, coming at one time? Yeah, like complete uh, or it seems to happen suddenly. And yeah. Do you often turn to words you've written in the past to put music to uh, in terms of going back and pulling ideas out of your own head and repurposing them for song? Yeah, li just little pieces. Or uh, just an, uh, an idea of something that would be nice to write a song about and then save it for when there's some music that needs the words. Yeah, cool. Um, you know, about the music, one thing I read about this uh, record that I couldn't help but ask you about a little bit is that uh, I read that the, the foundation of the record was captured in the tool shed uh, using ancient and secret methods of time distortion. And I have to, you know, if you got anything on, like, those ancient and secret methods, I'm curious as to... Because I would, I would try to use them myself somehow. I don't know if I can talk about that. <laughs> That's cool. Um, I thought maybe that would be your answer, but I needed to ask, just in case I could get a key to the lock of the ancient methods. Oh, I'm just an initiate. I mean, not even. Uh, we just happen to be in the presence of a really mighty individual, and, uh, uh, yeah, I'm just kind of in awe. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe later we can talk about distorting time. I'm definitely interested in that subject. But, uh, we'll talk about that in the future. In the future. Yeah, if yeah, you or, want to or, weigh or in, the Pete, past. I feel like this is the man to talk to, uh, if, if anybody present, um, at mm. your leisure. Well, I maybe I could just round it out, not knowing what we're really talking about. Yeah. Um, I think some of this, well, actually what I was really thinking when he was saying that, was that sometimes the songs are written like some other dimension of mind and you know, emotion and so on. And you just asked him that question, oh, do you write the lyrics first? And his answer was like every which way, kind of maybe that's, that's the, uh, it kind of is built somewhere else and then it is here, sometimes all in one piece. That's the great, uh, You're pulling but not every time. Out of the, yeah. out of the ether. Yeah, what, however we describe that, but there is, that's the other place. Yeah, cool, cool. Um, so uh, I, I think you were saying the second song you're going to do for us today uh, does not appear on the new record. Um, what's that one going to be? I don't know if we've settled on a name yet. Uh, my, uh, mind, mind, mind slash mountain. Mind Maroon, slash mountain? Marooning the mountain. Marooning the mountain, yeah. I'll go with that. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. If you got the feeling 
Uh, so, you know, one other thing uh, I wanted to ask before we get to our last song of the day is I, I know I was reading, you, you were living in here in New York for some time, mm-hmm. uh, originally from Virginia, I yeah. believe. And then earlier, maybe it was this year, uh, moved back. Uh, I think you're in Richmond now. Is that, is that right? I was, yeah. You were? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm curious, you know, a lot of artists make their way to New York as a way almost to get away from where they started and sort of land somewhere new and, uh, you know, make art there. Um, and so I'm interested when, uh, you know, I read that someone has returned home. Uh, is there something to the idea of a connection to a place, a bond to a place that, you know, is, is, is significant in terms of inspiration or creating art uh, for you? Does that have something to do with it? No. No? It was more practical. Yeah, I thought that if I moved out of New York, I'd be able to pay rent, <laughs> and it turns out it's the same everywhere. Is that right? Just about, relatively. Really? Yeah, I just thought that like once I lived here for a long time, it would just be easy breezy when I left, and I had this naive notion that like living in the country, you know, you find some nice old couple and they'll let you live in the barn or something. Yeah. <laughs> and it'll be very cheap, but it turns out everybody is uh, broke and hungry, and. Uh, it's not that easy to just live live yeah. easily at least or it might just be a lousy attitude on my part but uh i i went down there for a while and kind of struggled the same way i was in the city and uh so now i'm just sort of floating around in terms of like you know the country and the city is one of those more conducive for you to getting the songs out and feeling as you know as as creative as you as you want to feel no, I think it's just like different parts of the body, like cities like the mind and the, the really human part, and the country's like the heart of the soul or the, not like the animal part, but like the spirit, the spirit part. And you really need a lot of both as a human being, I think. Yeah. It's great being in the city. It's really energizing and, and uh, exciting. But if you don't get out after a little while, <laughs> I think you start to go nuts. Unless you're born here, in which case I think people who grew up in the city experience the naturalness of it in a way that is like pretty foreign to someone like me who's not from a densely urban area yeah well it could it can work the other way you know as i mean i'm i'm from around these parts and you feel as though you almost can't leave yeah because it's everything that you know <laughs> and you go to the country and it's like well, what's that bug is that gonna poison me or yeah right or you go you go up a couple hours <laughs> okay. to like woodstock and you're like this is you know this is the country but yeah. really yeah. you know you're just like a, a train ride from the city um but yeah you know i don't know in terms of the uh you know the the, the country and the city I know some artists who are in really sort of take different elements from each and build a whole out of that. Um, so now, you know, as you are uh, moving along again, does that does that sort of that kind of um, moving around that kind of lifestyle, does that factor into how you do what you do or is it really just practical living? Um, I mean, it certainly has an effect, but I wouldn't say it's very positive. It's just... Uh yeah, it's just the necessity of of getting around and surviving. Yeah. Uh, but everything plays into it, and it's all good. I mean, any influence is good. Uh, th- some are more challenging than others, but maybe not comfort. Comfort doesn't seem to be very conducive to uh, working, but you need it sometimes. Yeah, all the songs are very comforting. I mean, they're beautiful and they are cozy and they're oh, warm. Yeah. So uh, there's 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 that going for you. Yeah. Um, so that swings us around to uh, to our last song of the day. You're gonna do one more from from Rare Feeling. Yeah, this is Hank and Georgia.
Thank you, guys. Thank you. And you too. So uh, the album is called Rare Feelings. It's coming out on October 20th. And uh, you guys are torn and supportive. And I know you got a show tonight coming up here in New York City at the Bowery Ballroom with Langhorn Slim. Yeah, that's right. Um, uh, more shows. I think all those dates, you got a Bandcamp site. Is that the main place people can go to find your music? You can also go to um, keeledscales.com, which is the label that's putting the record out. Uh, although on our Bandcamp, you can hear our uh, previous records and... Um, otherwise, I guess, like Facebook and all that stuff. Right, right, cool. Yeah, so uh, everyone, guys, you know, check out this great band tonight, uh, Tween, at Bowery Ballroom, uh, playing with Langhorn Slim, and uh, congrats on the record. So far, it sounds great. I can't wait to hear it for real uh, when it comes around. By the way, um, this is Ken Woodward, Peter Pezzamani, Jordan Hyde. And Matt Davidson. In the band here. In the right, right. Thanks for, thanks for doing <laughs> that. And, um, and you are Matt Davidson and uh, Twain. Thank you guys so much for, for coming and, and playing some new songs for us today here at Paste. Uh, they sound great. And come Thanks, back man. anytime and play for us again. Definitely. Love to. Thank right, you. Thanks.